The multimeter is a device that can be used to measure various quantities such as voltage, current, resistance, and so on. So basically, when you use the multimeter, there are two connections that you take from it. One is the negative that always goes into the common terminal, which is this one. COM, common, stands for the negative. So let's say you're trying to measure voltage. If you're trying to measure voltage, then the positive cable goes to what's labeled here on this side as the voltage. So you have one cable going off the common, the other going from the voltage, and then you connect those two, the other ends of those two cables between the points where you want to measure the voltage. So that's how you measure voltage. On the other hand, if you want to measure current, then the common cable stays in place, but you got to remove that other one from where it says voltage, remove it and put it into either of these two. Both are used to measure current. This one is used to measure very small currents of the order of milliampers. And this one is used to measure up to 20 amperes. So in this experiment, we will be using this part because we know that the current is, is going to be more than a few milliampers. okay? And again, whenever you're measuring voltage, you got to take this, you see, this is, you can turn this and put it across at different points. If you're measuring DC voltages, then you put it across these parts. I know you can't see it clearly, but it says DC voltage there, and then it's AC here. So if you're trying to measure AC, you go all the way to the AC part here. When you're trying to measure current, after you put those cables where I told you to, you put this in, if it's AC current, you put the selector switch here. If it's DC current, then you put it here. So in this lab, we will measure voltage and current. So when, and you're measuring DC. So you will put it across to 200 volt because we know that's the maximum. You're not going to get anywhere near 200 volts. It's going to be less than 10 volt. So you put it on 200 volt because we know that what we are measuring is definitely less than 200 volt, okay? When you're measuring currents, again, it's DC, you, so you put it on 20 ampere, 20 ampere. The, the multimeter can also be used to measure resistance and then in that case, you will put it across here where it says gives resistance values, gives 200 ohm, 2000 ohm, 20 kilo ohm, 200 kilo ohm to 20 mega ohm. So that's how you use the multimeter for measuring voltages, currents, and resistances. In Kirchhoff's laws, we are going to check the two laws namely the current law and the voltage law, okay? According to the current law or the current rule, the total current coming into a junction is equal to the total currents leaving the junction. In the voltage rule, the the total voltage in a closed network is zero. So these are the two rules they're going to test out. And in order to do that, we are using a circuit as a given here in this diagram. So in this diagram, you have two voltage sources, that's V1, and then you have V2. You can see that the negatives of the sources are connected together to X, and then you have three resistances, R1, R2, and R3. 
These are ammeters used to measure the currents and we will be using the multimeters at these three points. We'll only be using one meter at a time. So what we'll do is we'll first connect the multimeter here to measure that current and then remove it and mesh, uh, connect it here and then across the third resistance. So we will use the multimeter to measure the currents by connecting that multimeter in series in the resistances uh, in the circuit at the end of each resistance R1, R2 and R3 and thereby we will measure the currents I1, I2 and I3. But before we start measuring uh, the currents and the voltages, let me show you how we actually connect this in real life. So we need two sources and three resistances. So here they are. You have the two sources V1 and V2 and the three resistances R1, R2, R3. These are decade boxes in which uh, you've used this before. And you know, in the, these you can put uh, whatever resistance you want. So that's R1, this is R2, and this is R3. And then I'm gonna connect it. In real life, you gotta have cables connected. So these are the two negatives of the sources. They are connected together. That's the cable that I'm using here. The two negatives connected together. And then from the positive of this one, it's connected to R1, okay? So I'm gonna bring that up from the positive of R1, you connect to, uh, to positive of V1, I mean, you connect to one end of R1, and then the positive of the other one is connected to one end of R2, and then this common is connected to R2. Okay, this was R3, this is R2. From the positive, the other end of R1, you see this cable, we don't have the multimeter yet, so that means you're gonna bring this, hook it up to the other end, and then get a cable from here to this point. Okay, so let me take that back. So that's the actual connection that you see in real life. So now the connections are ready to go. And when we wanna measure current, let's say we wanna measure current I1, you will have to remove this cable. Remember, this cable is removed and we will put the multimeter in that position to measure that current I1 because that same current should now flow through the multimeter. So that's what I'm showing now. That cable is removed and the multimeter is ready here and you connect it this way. So now this current I1 will flow through the multimeter and the circuit would be completed, right? Now, in order to find I2, we have to remove the multimeter from there, put this cable back here, next remove this cable and connect the multimeter here. Likewise, you got to put this cable back and connect the multimeter here, across the third resistance, as you can see. So that's how we measure the currents. Now we also need to measure three voltages. One will be voltage A, which is this point. So you can see that the multimeter is now connected between points A and X. X is where both the negatives are connected together, the negatives of the two sources, and that's going to be the ground or zero. So when you put the multimeter this way, you're actually getting the voltage at A. Next, what we will do is we'll remove this connection and connect it across B. So we will have the cable at X and then we'll have this one to B. So there you will get the voltage VB. Similarly, when you move this cable and connect it to C, keeping this one at X, you will get the voltage VC. So that's all you do in the lab. You connect the circuit and then measure the three currents, I1, I2, I3, and measure the three voltages 
VA, VB, and VC. And then I'm going to show you how the calculations are done. But before that, I'm going to use a circuit simulator to actually measure the currents. All right, let's get there. All right, so here is the circuit simulator. Let me switch off the simulation. So you, here you see V1, 7 volt, V2, 5 volt. Resistance R1 is 20 ohms, R2 is 5 ohms, and R3 is 15 ohms. We have to measure the currents and the voltages. So here we go. Now you can see the currents flowing. You can see the little dots moving that gives you the direction of current. And then to measure the first voltage, VA. So you get the first voltage. It's, you can clearly see it's 7 volt. And you also get the current. The current is 242.11 milliampere, which is 0.242 ampere. So you write down the values in amperes. So take down these numbers. So that's I1 and VA. All right, next let's go to I2, I2 and VB. So I2 is 0.431 ampere. And VB is 2.16 volt. 2.16 volt. Now for the final one. VC is 180, I'm sorry, 5 volt. VC is 5 volt. And I3 is 0.189 ampere. 0.189 ampere. So there you get those three currents and the voltages but we have to repeat this lab and when we repeat it we're going to switch the sources that means i'm going to show you that means we're going to switch this seven volt let me pick that the seven volt and we're going to change its value to five like i'm doing now so that's five volt and then similarly pick this and change that to seven. So we have actually switched the sources. So you can see V1 is five volt now, and V2 is seven volts, and let's measure those quantities again. So here we go. V, oh wait, uh, switch on the circuit simulator first. V1 is five volt, VA, I should say, VA is five volt. I1 is 0.137 ampere. 0.137 ampere. VB, 2.26 volt. 2.26 volt. And I2 is 0.452 ampere. 0.452 ampere. Now the last one. Here we go. We see 7 volt as expected. And I3, 0.316 ampere, 0.316 ampere. So you have your values. And, you know, it would have been good if we had done this in the lab. But this is as close to real life as we can get. So you have now done the lab. You have the values for two sets. Now you got to put it into the lab report. Look at the data that you have, see what you got to do. And then the most important thing in this lab is you have to theoretically apply Kirchhoff's laws and calculate the values of the currents I1, I2, I3. So you have to get those three simultaneous equations, solve for I1, I2, I3. Just do it in the first case. Just do it in one case. And then you will compare those three values of the currents with what you actually measured. And if they are close enough, that means Kirchhoff's laws are good. We know it's good, but let's see how close you get those values. All right, thank you. Um, send in the lab report before midnight on Saturday and see you on the next video.